And this is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Natasha Jonas. Long day of media. Um, yeah. How are you? How's the day been? It's good. Yeah, you're the best. Uh, yeah, they saved the best for last, so no pressure. Well, you're just flattering me there, Natasha. But uh, <laughs> yeah, look, um, finally get a fight for you over the line before Christmas. Hannah had a bazin. Um, yeah, talk to me about the fight. Great fight, and more importantly, out before Christmas, which was I know was a very big thing for you. Yeah, no, I, I didn't want to do another camp over Christmas. Um, I wanted to have that time off and enjoy with me little girl, um, and not be hungry and not be moody and not miss out on desserts and not you know skip on Christmas dinner. So yeah, it's important. Um, but it's there's a job to be done. Um, so yeah, I've got to make all them sacrifices before. After an excellent performance in January, has it been frustrating waiting for an opponent for so long, waiting for a date? Yeah, I think I said, and you know, I think the the thing that I feel when I perform my best is when I'm active, and to have eleven months out of the ring is just far too long to be inactive. And you know, training's different when you you've got no date, and it's hard to motivate yourself and to keep going to sessions and to keep getting bar bag drills from Joe and 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 there's nothing coming up but now I've got that and, and I feel like I'm I'm in a different mindset and a different you know concentration and motivation and, and it got me eyes that the prize is almost there so I've, yeah it's a different focus and reset and go again. We were speaking to Joe Gallagher about two weeks ago and he was expressing his concern for you and if you carry on waiting, would it get to that stage where he would have a conversation for you to say, Natasha, is there anything else for you to achieve? Um, was that ever in the question, a retirement? Did you ever have kind of that uncomfortable situation with Joe Gallagher where he may have suggested those sort of movements? I think it's something that we've, we've, we have both talked about, not in depth, I wouldn't say, but definitely have spoken about, you know, the... The last year we waited, this year we've waited, and it is too long. And it is, and it's like, can you keep picking yourself up to bring out them big performances? And and the last two times I have, um, but I don't want to sit around waiting and and doing that. I, I want to be active and active, physically present. You know, my, mentally ready for the next fight. So, um, it's 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 not something. There's still things I believe I can do and want to do before I, I want to walk away from this sport with no regrets and I think to walk away at this present stage when there is still big massive fights and big massive nights um, available I, I do think that yeah I'm, I've still got them in me Do you feel like you've still got more to give to the sport? Take away those big fights but for you personally what you see yourself doing in the gym whether it's ticking over deep in camp you're still in there, you're still a world champion and you're still putting on those massive nights. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, there's, 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 there's always there's always going to be big fights and there's, I, I, every camp, I'm, I'm still lifting heavier weights, I'm still smashing my times on the run, so my body isn't giving out and my mind definitely isn't, so as long as them two things, the mind's the most powerful th thing you've got, so as long as your mind's with you, which I believe it is, then then my body can do whatever it wants. So, yeah, they've got to work in unison to make me successful, and I think I do that really well. When you first turned professional, did you ever think you'd be in a situation where you would be consistently headlining um, arenas live on Sky Sport? Realistically, no, no females were doing it that, at that time, and you are one of the real pioneers right now. Yeah, it was, the, the, I mean, when I first started, you know, you, you never know, no matter what I've done, I've never, I've never had like a big dream and thought, right, that's where I want to be. I've, I've always thought, right, I'm going to get there and see what happens. And I've, I've got there and like I, I went from, from boxing on the, boxing for the club to, I thought, right, that's as good as it's going to get. 
But then, you know, a box for the club. And then he was like, OK, you can go in the ABAs. When in the ABAs, they were like, OK, you've won it. Now now you can box for England. When and done that, then he was like, OK, now you're here. We're going to be in the Olympics. Now you can go to GB. Went, and went to GB and qualified for the Olympics. Then you go pro. You're like, OK, I'll have my first one or two fights. See where that goes. You know, add a bump. Comes back and they're like, OK, there's an opportunity to fight for a world title. Draws that as another one against KZ. Loses by a round. And then it was like... Can I can I still do it? What what is going to be next for me? Gets the Namas fight. And it's like, okay, well, there's a bear gulp fight if you want that. Takes the bear gulp fight. Okay, there's a decay fight if you want that. Okay, yeah, do that. Okay, there's a there's a Andy Wyatt fight if you want that. Goes so at every given stage, there's always been another opportunity. So when the opportunities stop, that's when you've got to reassess like what what are you doing? But while them opportunities are still there, I think it'd be I wouldn't be I wouldn't be satisfied to walk away when, when knowing that I can still physically do that. In your mind, should you come through the 14th of December? Is that next opportunity, Lauren Price? I've contract. I'm contracted to Lauren Price, so I don't know what her contract says, but I'm contracted to fight Lauren Price. Yeah, I spoke to her early today, and she said the fight will happen. Um, from your perspective, as I saw on Sky, you said it was a WBA title you haven't got yet. Um, yeah. is that a big thing for you or is it about a proper big domestic British fight? I think that's just, you know, me talking, but mm. um, no, I think it's a, a good fight. I I, I, I I need a bit of fear factor to to bring out the best in me. And I've said that against Michaela Meyer, you know, I've said it against Katie, said it against Teddy and, and they've probably been some of my biggest, biggest achievements. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that's still the case, and and Lauren is as you know she's coming with the whole of the amateur pedigree and Olympic gold medalist, and you know what she's brought through the pros. But I'm here to say, don't don't be careful what you wish for. Again, when we spoke to Joe a couple of weeks ago, he hinted, kind of teased us that there could be from your side, you'd want that one last dance with Katie Taylor. Is that still I- something you'd target? Yeah, I've never, I've never, never said I wouldn't do that. That's definitely still something. I think that is my piece. That fight would be the piece that I can say, lose, okay, you know, I fought the, I fought her three times. She beat me three times. She was just a better fighter. Or I could win and be like, you know what, that's the only thing I needed to, to, to make me self, myself satisfied with my boxing career. I'm done now. Thank you. What did you make of her performance over the weekend? So I, I didn't score it round by round with me little sky head on, I mean little notepads. I just I just remember thinking at the end of the fight, she's just about nicked it. Um so if they would have said Serrano, I wouldn't have argued. I thought it was a really close fight. Again, absolutely war, blood, sweat, tears, grit, determination, skills. Punches, shots, big shots, everything that you'd want, you, you got it in that fight, and that was the not even close. It wasn't. It wasn't close in the being the best fight of the on that whole card by a million miles. And the fact that two females did that on a stage such as that is, you know, a testament to themselves and how hard and dedicated they are in the training. But it also paves the way for others to to go out and put up big performances, as a big night like that as well. Do you think she's still the same fighter as when she fought you as a pro? You know what happens? Um, this is just my personal opinion. I think in the amateurs, Katie was the Limachenko of, of of female amateur boxing and there was just no one who could get close to her. But then as the years went on, she didn't have anyone to push her. But we, she, she was the push for all of us, and we had to catch up, otherwise we'd be left behind. And that's what happened. That's what we did. You know, we've seen close fights in 2012, um, uh, close, even closer fights in 2016, and she ended up getting beat. So that's just what happened. And I think the same with the pros. She, she went out and she set the pro world alight, and was so far up everyone else. But she set the standard, and then everyone had to catch up to that standard, and they did. And, and now, you know, every fight is a hard, close-fought fight because everybody catches up. 
in an ideal world, you get past Hannah on December 14th and you and Katie do get it on. I know it was the finest of finest margins last time, but do you believe this is the best chance you, you, you'll you ever have to beat Katie Taylor if it happened in Q1, Q2 next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, I just think, yeah, I think, but I thought I thought that the first time, <laughs> so uh, maybe I could be wrong. Which which, but I just think yeah, I just think I, I do think her kind of Achilles is southpaws. I do think that from an amateur all the way up, um, and then yeah, you just I'd probably box a little bit different, a bit more experienced myself. That was the second time when I fought it as a pro. That was the second time I'd ever had a, a ten rounder. So there's things that I, I learned in that fight that I definitely don't do now. And that's only come through experience of having them 10 rounders myself. So, yeah, I think the fight's a, a different fight now. Excellent, Tash. Thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. Tune in December 14th in Liverpool. Is there anything else you would like to mention before we finish off? No, just thank you to the fans for, you know, riding this one out with me again. Um Enjoy the ride. The best chapters of the book are still to be written. So thank you and enjoy on, on December the 14th. And Sasha Jonas, thank you very much. Cheers, Tash. Thanks.